Changusara leading the meditation. Uh, right now, time for the Dhamma talk. Uh, three of our guest speaker, Venerable Tri Dao, he's uh, originally from Vietnam, but uh, Vietnam is American great monks. Uh, he's in Florida right now. I think he's ready to give his Dhamma talk. Good afternoon to all of you in the United States on the West Coast. Uh, it is now 2.40 here in Florida, and I am quite honored to be invited again to give everyone a Dhamma talk today. Um, tomorrow is actually my birthday, and every year on my birthday, I give more and take less, a way of exemplifying the life of a monk. So instead of uh, accepting gifts and presents, I actually like I, the whole month, I teach in-person meditation and give uh, Dhamma talks all month. So. The last time I gave a talk, um, and comes now, Venerable Santi uh, said that you can choose any subject you like. And I was wondering if there was a particular question or subject that our audience here today would like to ask. Uh, I think it would do a lot of justice asking if you have any questions or a particular Dhamma subject that you would like. If not, I will. I have already prepared one for all of you, so I'll give it a couple of seconds for whoever would like to uh, unmute um, and ask. speak now, you will forever hold your peace. <laughs> the saying we have in America. Okay. <clears throat> so given that no one raised their hand or like to uh, ask uh, for a particular subject, um, I'd like to proceed on with my demo talk today, which first and foremost in Theravada Buddhism, we focus our on our own practice. And Right now, again, uh, particularly in California, there's a lot of crime rates over there. So we assert that we must look inwards to handle and respond skillfully uh, with the world that is around us. So how do we live the Dhamma? How do we exemplify the Dhamma? How do we practice the Dhamma? And upon further investigation throughout my whole career, actually, and on the subject of samsara and the samsaric forces in our minds from moment to moment to moment. Ah. It leads to this talk today because it's actually challenging to fully, honestly, and genuinely live the Dhamma. Uh, this, this talk, what prompted this talk was my observation of a student and the parents of that student. Now, the student's only 22 years old. And their parents just came to America. Her parents, actually, just came to America. And so I like to meet the, with the parents and get some background information on a student, on any student. <laughs> and the parents said, you know, she was going to be a Buddhist nun 
because in Vietnam before coming to America, that's all she did was go to the temple and listen to Dhamma and Dhamma and Dhamma. So a week later when I met with the whole family um, and I caught a sample of their lives, a sample of this young woman's life, young student, young girl. 22 is considered an adult <clears throat> and she was very upset. I, I caught a moment of her getting upset at the driving instructor because she wanted she wanted her parents to get their driver license fast so that they can have a car and make money fast. Mm. So of course anyone that is in the ages of adolescence in America they tend to get on the hamster wheel and try to push things quick and fast and of course this poor young girl's parents haven't even adjusted uh, adapted to American life. <laughs> Nonetheless, a rush to get their driver license and studying traffic law. But it was a very explosive argument as she was pushing the instructor, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that, pushing why her, her parents failed the exam onto the instructor. And the instructor explained that, I, I don't think that your parents have fully adjusted, I think that they need some more time. The explosion led to a lot of wrong speech in the noble eightfold path. And it, it never seems to surprise me when I watch the samsaric forces unfold in humans. That means that hopefully if we practice diligently, we respond skillfully and we catch everything as it unfolds according to the links of dependent origination paticca samuppada and how how fast the formation of thoughts how fast the desire arises and the next thing we know we respond to that It is my encouragement now than ever before in America where when we see crime rates rise, that has everything to do with morality and ethics and it has everything to do with the first full training which is sila. We Buddhists have to make ourselves <coughs> visible. visible by and through our actions made visible, the Dhamma made visible by and through our body, speech, and mind. Hmm. It's difficult knowing whether a person is Buddhist or not because it is not, it is not, um, it is not quickly visible as consistent with other religion. If you reflect on the Christianity religion, you see that we see people wearing crosses around their neck. Clearly, you see that they are Christian or Catholic or Presbyterian or Lutheran and so on. But how do you know, <laughs> how do you know when someone is Buddhist? Ah. So when the person who is wearing a cross, for example, a religious symbol, opens the door for another, the recipient who is receiving that gift of kindness and they see the cross and they clearly say to themselves, ah, the Lord has taught you well. The pastor has taught you well. The archbishop, the bishop, the priest, the father has taught you well. But we Buddhists, when we wear a Buddhist symbol, <laughs> Not a lot of people know what the Dhamma wheel looks like, uh, the Dhamma Chakra. When, when they see the Buddha on our necklace, they, they're not sure which Buddha is it. Is it the Buddha with the big belly? Is it the one and only historical Gautama Buddha? Is it Amitabha? <laughs> 
So, more than ever before, we have to exemplify these acts of kindness. And the hope is here is that the profound act of kindness, by and through thought, speech, and action, is so profound that it can actually start a conversation for you to inspire other people. Hmm. The act is so kind that they stop, that you stop them in their tracks, and they come to you and they say, I, I apologize, but are you, are you, are you Buddhist or are you Christian? <laughs> ah. It, it's a good start. That is my challenge for everyone, is to exemplify and live the Dhamma every day. It is your gift to the world. As Buddhists, we must give more and take less. By always thinking about others, by always putting others first. There are many different types of benefits to this. Not only do you yourself benefit from the happiness of doing so much for others, and that this is exactly what the Buddha would want you to do, but you are improving your karmic debts, you are improving your good karma, that you are making merit, directly making merit, by and through your intention that morning. Intention, volition, all of the elements that has to start the good karmic forces. There are many benefits of thinking others in mind. As we grow older and older, we realize our health is limited, our physical uh, embodiment is questionable. You can always access these memories of helping others uh, in your later years. You inspire your whole family and everyone around you by the act of kindness. And if you have children and grandchildren, you can remind them. If we don't get out of the house a lot to engage with other humans, encounter other humans, we want to, we want to save the world, do we not, in some way? We want to affect the world in some way. One must ask, how well am I cultivating the Dhamma world in my own home. Hmm. So, this whole month I gave a karmic challenge online. The karmic challenge is that everyone please this month practice right speech. Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it beneficial? Is the timing of this speech correct? So first, they do it by themselves. And second, I tell them to play lawyer in their own home, where of which if someone does not practice right speech, they can object. It's no different than what we see in trials with attorneys, right? Objection asked to the form, objection asked uh, uh, to different elements. But by inspiring other people and making a good humor out of wrong speech in the home, you can say, objection, wrong speech. Objection, it is not beneficial. Objection, this timing is not ideal. Hmm. We can have fun with the Dhamma. We can be creative with the Dhamma. It need not to be so dry in the home, in our practice, with people. I hope to be there one day present with all of you at IBMC so that you see the humor in the practice of the Dhamma that I exemplify on a day-to-day -day basis. More than ever before, we Buddhists need to now inspire other people by and through our own practice and into the details of our practice. 
And into the details of our practice is in the details with how we meditate, how long we meditate, why we meditate, and for who do we meditate for. These are good reflections for oneself as it enhances your meditation experience and that it is good antidote to the five hindrances on your meditative path. I was inspired by my grandmother who meditated daily. Samadhi. She practiced Samatha from the time I knew her, from the time she immigrated to the United States, up until her passing in 2015. I was actually a Catholic, but moved by how she treated people, how she treated strangers. And I said, wow, there, there is something about this practice there's something about this philosophy that can move someone. The, her practice made visible through the eyes of my heart. Her practice made visible through the eyes of my heart. I hope to all the Buddhists around the world realize this. What does it mean to see the noble truths? What does it mean to see the first noble truth? What does it mean to see birth, decay, disease, What does it mean to see death? Uh -huh. Seeing does not just mean seeing with one's eyes. Seeing means do you see it with your heart. When the heart is moved, then a person will change. they will change. Sometimes they change and they don't even know it. Sometimes family members notice it. Hmm. And our world is changing, but we realize we have so much power as Dhamma practitioners is that every moment of the day we have the power to be aware of the sansaric forces. Every day when we are aware of our senses, ayatana, and how it propels us out the door to exemplify the Dhamma. Waking up is a choice. I choose to be a positive person today. I choose to be a good person today. I choose to spread the teachings of the Buddha by and through my own actions, by and through the way how I think, and by right speech, I will make the Dhamma visible to the world. And as we, as I give you all this talk, which has everything to do with morality, it actually has to do with all three, right? Sila, Samadhi, and Banya, and how we connect all of it together. 
seeing the samsaric forces play out. Hmm. I also want to give the second part of this demo talk on sainthood. It is, it is my job, it is my duty as a monk to inspire particularly young people now who are really curious about Buddhism. There's different categories of different religions that the young people are now questioning the prevalence of secular secularization and the dangers of secularization. So one way to inspire those who wants to become Buddhist is the end goal of Buddhism. Now, of course, we have Mahayana, the Pure Land, and we have Theravada, which is Arahantship. We should strive for sainthood in any tradition. There is sainthood in Theravada, there is uh, the same version of it in Mahayana. Uh, there are similar aspects in Vajrayana and including the world of Christianity and Catholic world. That's what, that's what the commonalities in different religions have, which is really cool. It looks, it gives young people, it gives all of us Buddhists something to look forward to. Now, people who have studied the four stages of enlightenment, there's a lot of confusions in the different stages of Sotapan, of Sakadakami, of Anagami, and Arahant. But to put it to put it in a very similar similar form, sim, um, to put it in a simple explanation, it all has to do with the self, the attachment to the self. how we no longer identify with the self. Mm. And this actually ties back to what I said in the beginning today of our practice, by being mindful about having the benefits of others in mind, by being mindful of our meditation practices. These are steps we take to mitigate the formation of, this, of the, the sense of importance of the self, the Atta. Ah. Buddhism is actually easy to understand if we look at it simple, simple way of practice. It, it, and it starts with the little baby steps and gradually you grow Gradually, you climb the ladder of sainthood. Mm. We need we need more Buddhist angels now than ever before. We need more saints now than ever before to help with the minimizing, the mitigation to help to thwart, to lessen the proliferation, the prevalence of evil in the world, of unkindfulness, untruthfulness. Hmm. There are saints that live among us In all traditions, hmm, there are saints that live among us in different religions. They live among us. 
they're in our grocery stores. They are outside. They are there. If we practice diligently, we can recognize them. Now, one may or may not achieve sainthood, but getting close to it is a really good idea. It's a good idea from a karmic standpoint. One does not want to come back in rebirth, so one would strive in any level, starting with Sotapan. But even if you're not Theravada, one should strive. Well, where, where do I start? <laughs> where do I start, dear Venerable? How do I start? The words, the powerful words of a monk, the powerful teachings in the Dhamma teaches you how to live. It guides you. It is the light that guides you towards this path whether you know it or you don't, whether you are aware of the benefits of the path of the Dhamma or not. We teachers are charged with that responsibility in leading you to it. One day your eyes are open and you realize, wow, I am almost there. And when you're so into this path, which I hope, <laughs> I hope everyone is passionate of practicing the Dhamma as much as I am. I hope everyone has the benefits of the well-beings of, uh, of all others as much as I am. I think about this every day. I think about the people in New York, I think about the people in California, I think about all of the hotspots in the United States that is adversely affected by people who do not practice the Dhamma. The awareness of the proliferation of greed, anger, and foolishness in the world, across the world. And so every monk does his job geographically where they are in spreading the teachings and trying to pinpoint which teaching is most important now for the benefits of the people where they're at and not just where they're at geographically but where they're at in their spiritual path and to recognize that each individual is unique and the spiritual dimensions of each individual And so today serves as a supplement, nurturing your spiritual needs, nurturing your spiritual growth, nurturing your spiritual development. I encourage all of you wonderful Buddhists around the world and at IBMC to now we all must rise. We all must use the Dhamma to rise together. We battle the forces of the three poisons within ourselves that we are determined to defeat. We will defeat a determination to defeat. 
And once we have defeated that, we slowly see the world in our home inspired by that defeat with one's battle. And slowly it emanates out to our kids, children, cousins, brothers, sisters, neighbors. It would be a home that is glowing. A Dhamma home that is glowing with brightness, with light, hope, wisdom, universal love. Light, hope, wisdom, universal love. In recapping today's, I gave a lot of elements. Hopefully everyone <laughs> remembers them. Elements of right speech, elements of giving, which is dana, the practice of dana, generosity. Elements of meditation, the joy in your meditation, the benefits of meditation. Elements of sila. Elements of sainthood. And all these will lead to joy, to joy, to true inner joy, true inner peace, true inner liberation, and lastly, true inner freedom. So at this time, I'd like to conclude my Dhamma talk with all of you. I'd like to give you all my wishes. May you all be well. May you all be happy. May you all be healthy. May you all realize the light of your own true nature. May you know what it's uh, like. Thank you very much. May you know what it's like. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Venerable Shanti, uh, for having uh, me. Thank you, Venerable yes. Tubaro. And thank you again, your good Dhamma talk, sharing with your experience. I think we have a couple of questions for the audience. I have here Mr. Nam. He's from Vietnam, American. And Ms. Nam actually introduced to me about you earlier. So, Mr. Nam, I have a little question. So, Nam, you can ask. Hi, Venerable uh, Tidal. Um, um, thank you for the uh, Dharma talk today. Uh, I, I have a question uh, at the late, late life practice. Uh, what what is the most important thing to uh, uh, to practice, and how do we start it? Uh, this is my question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nam. I like to greet and salutate everyone from Vietnam. Sư chỉ đạo kính chào hết tất cả ở bên Việt Nam và hết tất cả. Uh, we are by GM of in Dubai, California. This uh, very good question. What is the most important thing for lay people to practice? When we look at the, na the true nature of the human, true nature of reality of humans, 
we realize that we have this perpetual self-interest. Ah, perpetual self-interest. Perpetual means constantly. In Vietnamese, pitok. Lúc nào cũng pitok hết. Vòng tròn, vòng tròn, vòng tròn. Self-interest. Lúc nào cũng quan tâm về chính mình. Tôi, tôi và tôi, của tôi, cái này của tôi. Tôi muốn, tôi muốn, của tôi. À. And how, what practice do we use to alleviate the suffering? À, phương pháp gì mình dùng để cho mình bớt khổ vì cái tôi của mình? Hmm. What practice? The practice of doing more for others. The practice of dana, generosity. But then we no longer have this me, my, I, me, my, I, every day. <laughs> Just listen carefully. <laughs> Everyone can be a psychologist today when we listen carefully to people. It's hot in here. <laughs> I want to go to the beach. <laughs> I want a bigger couch. <laughs> I want a newer car. Uh, I, I don't like this ice cream. This steak doesn't look very rare. <laughs> the preference, so this is the identification of the samsaric force, the identification of Padicca Sambhupada, dependent origination, right? We start tracing back, we realize the perpetual self-interest, me, my, I. The quickest way to, the medicine for it, is give, what, give what? What happened if you don't have a dollar right now to give? It's okay. The Dalai Lama said, dedicate your body, speech, and mind for the benefit of others. Slowly we see that we want less for ourselves. And slowly we see that our life becomes more about others. The interconnectedness, the, inter the, the dependent with our neighbors, with people sitting next to us right now in the temple. Ah. Now if everyone did that, we wouldn't have problems that we see in the world today. Mr. Nam, I hope that that answers your question. Yes. Thank you uh, very much, Venerable Chijiao. Uh, this is a very good uh, answer, and uh, appreciate. You. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll uh, hear from you again soon. Thank I, you um, very much. I, I, I wanted to add just one more thing before Venerable Shanti picks up the microphone. <laughs> Is um, by and through my own practice, I hope to inspire all of you. You see these psychological insight. We all know Theravada is very analytical, very psychological. But you see, I went through all of this as a young man. The me, the my, the I. I don't like this girl. I want a new car. I, you know, I, I don't like the temperature. It's too cold. It's too hot. But, but when I started to change and give, it, it starts with, my life started out with volunteering at the temple. Yeah. And, and the more I volunteered, the more I gave, the more joy I had at home. And even though life was never good to me, I realized, I, I, I closed my eyes and I said, I don't think I'm going to suffer long because of how much I gave. Look at how much I gave. Ah. But see, I had no money to give. But every day, every day, for 16 years in the temple, I meditated. Every day, I smiled to people. 
Two times my age, three times my age, and four times my age. I smiled. I was the youngest one in the temple to chant. I was so good at chanting, I didn't need the book. <laughs> now I need the book again. <laughs> so, by and through my own practice, I, re I came to realization to see it, not to just see it with my eyes, but to see it with my heart. And now all I know is to give. All I know is to give. And now I no longer identify with myself. You give so much, sometimes you, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Of course, our basic needs, right? This, if this is not to the extreme that the Buddha taught about you know, not taking care of yourself. Your basic need needs to be met before, um, you know, that you're following the, the, the teachings of the monk of giving, right? Food, water, shelter, safety, and so on. But I, I hope that that answers that and the, just the joy of, of giving. Yes. I'd like to make, take the next question if there is one. Uh, Venerable Shanti. Uh, is there any question? Victor, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just wanted to say thank you for your lovely and very important talk. It was a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. You're most welcome, Mr. John. Uh, uh thank you. Uh, thank you again, uh, Wonderful Kidao. Hope to see you again sometime in June or August sometime. Uh, I really appreciate about your time and your energy giving to our uh, Dharma uh, world. So thanks again. So we're going to chant right now the page 4 and page uh, 10. And still, I don't know who is going to give a Dharma talk next Sunday. Somebody will be there. We'll see. Uh, we will announce to the, our webpage. So right now, we're going to turn the page, uh, page four and page ten. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, having me. Um, I just deactivated the Zoom as they're going to resume in chanting, and my parents are waiting at the airport for me to pick them up from New York. I'd like to thank everyone here for being such wonderful listeners, especially all of the patient crowd on YouTube and all of the patient crowd on TikTok. I apologize uh, if I could not get back to any comments, uh, but I, now I have to deactivate everything and go. May you all go in peace, love, and light throughout the whole week and please everything that was said today applies to everyone across the world in regards to the, giving the gift of safety, practicing dana, generosity and again when you have nothing else to give you give your body, speech and mind for the benefit of others and this we exemplify the Dhamma and with this we spread the teachings of the Dhamma and with this we are the Dhamma Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu Okay. Mm -hmm.